A disenchanter? A void anvil. An enchanting table. These villagers have been more than generous. Welcome to the mischief. I'm Valen, and this is Rustic Waters 2. Okay, yeah, I guess I'm trying to make it sound like I'm being gracious or something, but I, I'm, I'm not. I'm I'm stealing their stuff and, and heading out. <laughs> yeah, they they had a ton of things. I was just out here looking for bitter lily buds uh, because you can use them to make those water-resistant planks for the uh, the hopper botany pots. But um, yeah, I I opted to just kind of find their and take their stuff instead, which is pretty. Pretty good, actually. They had a lot of stuff. And I did see something on the map just to the north. I wanted to see what this was. I have not explored this thing yet. And I thought I would, uh, I don't know, just kind of do a little bit of a, a check it out. This looks like an inflatable raft of some sort. Now I'm really interested. Okay. Is this like a survivor? Oh! <gasps> a pupper! Quest complete! Observation. Okay. All right, hold on a second here. A friend indeed. It is a great dishonor for any member of Caladan's elite military unit, the Royal Sentry, to be seen in public without two things. Their imperial cape, hued with the color of the crown, and the royal canine they imprinted with and trained since birth. This quest will complete once you search a life raft on the surface for any survivors. The Liberty was equipped with emergency life pods and rafts. Some of those could be floating on the surface of the water. Find a life raft on the surface and see if any of the ship's pets stowed away on it. Use the monster ball to capture any pet that may have stowed away and bring it back to base. While you're exploring the water's surface, feel free to visit any islands or resources you see. It may save you a trip later. Oh, nice. Okay. And then there's uh, 12 bones. Well, I've got plenty of those downstairs. So, pupper? Get, get, get into ball, pupper. There we go. It worked. Okay. All right, nice. So I has a wolf in there. I, I will have to train you. And wow, what? Whoa, that that's a lot of crazy looking loot. Okay, why do I want difficulty plus ten modifiers? I keep getting these things. I want a warp scroll. Scroll use while sneaking to set a location. Nice. All right. Oh, and there's four bones right there. All right, I'm off to a good start. And already I see that I'm running into problems. I've got too much stuff to store in here, so let's just put it all in here for now. And I don't know if you guys noticed, I've changed my weapons and items. Oh, a red flag. Anyway, um, I now have a steel paxel. Yeah, good old me mechanism is in here, and look at the damage on that thing and the attack speed. <laughs> it kind of outclasses many things. But I still have my iron hammer, and this really saves me a lot of space on carrying things. So now I can carry more weapons. The silver greatsword's still going to be pretty good because it's got uh, extra reach. It's going to reach like another two, three blocks further than the steel paxel would. Um, and it has sweep three, which does all the damage to all the mobs I hit in the area. But if I, if I run into shield mobs, then I've got my silver halberd, which does even more damage. Or I could just use it on like single enemies or something like that. And it still has a similar reach. I might do a little explore around on the ocean and see what else I can find. Uh, maybe I'll find some more resources worthwhile. At the very least, I should find more of those like uh, plants that I need for making more of those botanical pots. All right, and I found an observer, a dropper, and a mediocre explorer's stash. I missed one of these on one of the previous like visits. Apparently, I, I break it and I get a loot crate, which is kind of cool. Uh, I will have to check that out. I've got a bed. Oh. Oh, it's it's day it's, it's nighttime. Okay, well, I'm gonna get out of here and continue exploring on other locations, and then we'll open up some loot when we get back home. So I did find another raft with another pupper. This was kind of to be expected, honestly. Uh, but the problem is, when I look up the monster ball recipes, it requires snowballs, and I don't have the option of making that just yet, um, or finding it at least out here. So hopefully, maybe I'll what? Okay. I was not anticipating finding an end island out here. Floating up above things? I thought that, oh, I guess I'm at 200, I'm not at 255, so that's a really unique find. I don't know that I can build up here or not. Um, either way, I don't have enough materials to build, and it looks like the water is flowing down off of it, but just barely, and it's not reaching the, the actual ocean. Maybe, maybe if I get a little closer, 
we can get a better look at this maybe I don't know that that water doesn't seem to be flowing down far enough for me to actually use it as a water elevator to get up there that's really cool though it is really high up there and with that I think I'm all right with the exploring I've done I've run into like where my old chunks were before I updated and you can you can tell this guy here did not he was not so fortunate with um yeah getting the house spawn <laughs> I also found that you could zoom in and out with your mouse wheel on the boat which is totally amazing but still I, I'm gonna head back my food supply is running a bit off and um yeah I, I, I've got a lot of loot to open so I'll see you guys at home let's check out these loot crates and see if I get anything good a dropping conveyor belt could be interesting the rest of it is rather meh and the other one I get a mob filter for a villager and a sconce lever okay well at least I got a five coin out of it okay so one of those loot chests gave me a lime bedroll which is kind of nice I can actually sleep wherever I want now and not reset my uh, spawn point which is really nice because I don't want to respawn somewhere up there and then have a really difficult journey to get back home I've got a couple of warp scrolls here and I am curious if I use use while sneaking to set a location all right so sneak you record your location to your warp scroll then if I use this do I like teleport to it let's go upstairs and try it uh here <gasps> and then it used it up okay all right well I'm going to do exactly that I'm going to set this here and I'm going to keep this in my inventory for future me to hopefully remember to use should I need to maybe I can use it when I go to the nether or something like that I, I don't know um either way I still have some other stuff I want to show you guys uh let, let's actually go over here I was getting low on uh wood supplies let me grab some of these logs in here like the driftwood I'm going to grab 10 of them for now and it should work out all right if you notice I've got like this hopper up behind here um, and some doors it's because I put down a campfire and a deployer on top of that and it automatically puts down any logs so let's put these in here instantly starts to putting them on there and I close this and it actually will uh, get picked up as those finish cooking by a hopper underneath that runs into this barrel there we go <laughs> And instantly I get lots of wood and the reason I did this is because I get six logs per per driftwood uh, with this method versus two logs uh, per and I only just made this so I've, I've kind of been struggling I've been running out of stuff uh, I've, I wanted to make more of the uh, there we go I'm, I'm making more of the charcoal but I keep on using it up oh the fluid storage is full okay so that's starting to back up in there I'm gonna need to maybe I need to make another one of these things because uh I keep on using it to make all this uh treated wood but I, I'm running out of space for the treated wood as well still making lots of steel as well I did get a magic spell from Ars Nouveau self launch times to glide duration down launches the caster into the air and grants temporary elytra flight Casts a spell at half the cost or the user's entire mana bar whichever is smaller okay let's do this outside in the water shall we and try oh my gosh oh that's pretty good how long does this last for like a minute or something this is nice can I I can use it again oh my gosh I now have flight with this thing wow okay that's pretty strong uh it, it makes me think who needs a boat at this point but then again I'm a terrible elytra flyer so I will probably end up killing myself with this thing looks like I still have the glide effect for some time to come um, but I also have other uh, abilities too so let's actually head back down because the most important thing is still left to take care of and that is our little monster capsule here we're going to need to set free the pupper let's put down the pupper Ta -da, we now has wolf let me grab some bones I don't know how you do with uh, uh kitties oh there we go you have you has been has been tamed that was actually much easier than I thought it would be yep and you can stay there for the moment 
All right, next I'm going to start trying to make some of these training treats. I need a bone, four of the same type of seed, and two sugar. And it needs to get mixed to make what looks like just one. And I, I can buy it in the market, but it's a 20 coin for one training treat. It's really expensive. Uh, so I'm just grabbing anything that I've got four of in here that I don't really need. Um, none of these are really particularly difficult to obtain. All right, so I worked it out. I've got nine sets of four of the seeds right now. So I'm going to toss in the bones, the sugar, and let's start with the rice seeds. And it should go from there, hopefully. Yep, got a training treat. And there we have it. I've made actually ten training treats. I thought I had nine. I actually had ten uh, set up. And I think I just got two more. I might have too many training treats. I don't know. We'll, we'll find out. But uh, it says here, your strainer should be providing you with a steady supply of bones. Also note that whales and orcas are a source of large amounts of bones. Not that I really need them. I do have like stacks upon stacks of bones. The service dogs on the ship were highly capable special breeds that had unique perks. However, after the traumatic experience of the crash, they have resorted to their wolfy tendencies and will need to be retamed. Right click them with bones until they reacclimate to you. Hearts over their head. Done and done. So then the next one here, I have training treats. Oh, I need a stick. Let me grab a let me grab a pupper stick. There we go. Each treat you feed your dog increases its level up to 20 per treat tier. Your dog receives ability points each time they level up. You can open the UI of your dog by right-clicking it with a stick. You can allocate ability points to the different abilities, making your dog much more capable. Now that you have retamed your service dog, you will need to jostle its training memory to unlock the skills it was taught in its youth. Craft two tasty treats for the pup and right-click to feed it. I'll grab these as well. I also has a a dog or a doggo bed uh, which actually let's put it there for now and I need to give you the snackos all right have a snack you ate the snack I give level up level up level up. I give you all the levels get leveled pupper all right let's right click you with the stick and I'm going to change the uh, appearance of this pupper oh my gosh there it is the Zopug has been reborn in Minecraft. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Okay. So with that, uh, obey others. Uh, there's nobody else really I need to worry about. But I have nine levels of, of regular levels. No dire levels as of yet. But there's all sorts of stuff. And some of these things have been like turned off uh, in, per the pack. Uh, but oh, swimmer. Oh, allows you to ride your dog in water and it to breathe longer underwater. Maxing it allows a rider to see easily underwater. That's great, but... I want I want the pupper to be able to breathe underwater. <laughs> oh, here we go. Whenever your dog enters the water, it may catch a fish, which it will give to you when it shakes itself dry. The chance of catching a fish increases with level, and any points in Hellhound may cause the fish to be pre-cooked. Mastering the skill lets your dog breathe underwater, which I feel that's pretty important. There we go. I have used five levels. So I, I can't level this up anymore. Pupper now can now live underwater if desired. Oh, and looking at Hellhound, it it allows my pupper to gain immunity from fire. Happy Eater, they can then eat zombie flesh at level 3 and, oh, fish at level 5, which the pupper would be fishing for. Okay. All right, Swimmer Dog, I think this might be what I'm looking for. Allows you to ride your dog in water and it to breathe longer underwater. Maxing allows the rider to see easily underwater. Well, I definitely want at least a point in, in this. And then Wolf Mount allows you to ride your dog anywhere at speed. Every level allows your dog to jump higher. To get on your dog, have an empty hand and jump and click on the dog to get on it. All right, let's try that before I start spending any more points on the pupper. And so I need to jump and right click when I do that. So I'm jumping, right click. And I hop on the pupper. Oh my gosh. Zoom! <laughs> I, I now have a, a Zopug is, is my pupper mount. <laughs> oh my gosh. I had a joust. Oh, it was a lead joust. I got rid of it. Maybe, I, I might have to get a joust if this is actually a thing. Um, so I don't know how you deal with like suffocation stuffs. Um, because... This is still single block floor, Zopug. Uh, but we'll, we'll we'll see about this. Let, let's um, that worked really good. What's gonna make you go a bit faster? 
Okay, Doggy Dash increases your dog's movement speed while chasing a target, and while it is being ridden, every level grants 12% increase, and mastering it grants an additional 15. All right, I'm going to give you two, two clicks in that, and then we're going to see about... You still aren't... Oh, wow, okay, that's me just jumping on that, but... You do go pretty quick. I mean, without it, it we're doing about the same speed as me right now, so it's not too bad. All right, there we go. I, I think I've used all the points that I, I want to at this point. So, Zoe, you stay here for now. Um, let me grab my monster ball. Can you get... Oh, I need to throw it at you. Let, all right, I, I, I may regret this, but we're going to try going out into the water. Let's see what happens. Grab my monster ball. <laughs> Okay, that, that, left shift to dismount thing, yep, so pug, you need to, can I get you to, like, not, <laughs> not be at the top there, <laughs> maybe you only swim at the surface, maybe that's what it is, and you're not like some scuba pup, but either way, you're not taking any suffocation damage, which is good, let me get my monster ball, and see about getting you, Okay, no, get back in there. You apparently were taking suffocation damage from the, from the water. I thought that you were a swimming pup. You okay, Zoe? Mastering the skill lets your dog breathe underwater with the fisher dog. Huh. Well, I thought that I mastered it. Level 5? Is, isn't that the master of it? You know what? You stay here for now. And uh, here, I will whoo, toss you in there. And you can come with me on adventures that are not in in the water. Maybe like in air air areas like this. I did not realize that this bed actually had another use here. I forgot. Like it's the bed is owned by Zoe. So if I right click on it with Zoe nearby, she'll jump on the bed. And if for some reason she dies, which she shouldn't, but if she does, just right click on the bed, she'll respawn. So you you don't really lose your pupper, which really really is nice. There is something else that I feel is rather important that needs to be made here. And it is this, a throw bone. And this is just for playing with your pupper. See, pupper, what? This is something that Zoe does not do at home. She does not fetch. <laughs> to bring back the slobber, got to shake off the slobber and throw it. Whoop, good pupper, good pupper. All right, let's see how you do with, way down there, zoom. <laughs> nice, teleporting back. Good zoe pug. Okay, that should work. So that was a, a wonderful little diversion. I was not anticipating this, uh, but yeah, we, we we did nonetheless get very distracted. <laughs> I feel I need to put the sticks in here. I'm, I'm going to need to get you a lot more training treats and other treats as well. I've got a mostly full inventory, but my storage crate is fairly empty. I am thinking I make myself one more uh, because that last one, oh, Wait, what? Do these not have a, a recipe anymore? Oh no, they've been removed in recent versions. I got so lucky with getting the ones that I did. Because I read that these storage crates were removed from the uh, the world spawn structures now. Um, yeah, even the reinforced ones have been removed. Oh my goodness. Well, you know what that means then? I have to go the, the, the route of a backpack. And if I look at a common backpack, it's just four bolts of linen, some leather, and a copper chest, which is a chest surrounded by copper. So let me get those materials together. One common backpack, which is not a lot, but it does help considerably nonetheless <laughs> for me to store stuff in. I can put my bedroll in here, extra set of torches, my warp scroll, monster ball, uh, heck, even the, the, the book. But before I go storing all this stuff in there, I'm going to upgrade my backpack. And something that I've learned is that if you upgrade backpacks, you always want to take out the contents just in case for some reason it deletes everything inside. Uh, so next I need Invar, which is more bolts of linen cloth plus Invar blend, uh, which I think I can make that. Oh yeah, which is crushed nickel and iron ore. Okay, that's not bad at all. Some crushed nickel, some crushed iron, and it should make me the invar that I'm looking for. Oh wait, I've, I've already got a bunch of invar. Well, I've got more now. Tossing in those four bolts of linen, eight invar blends should start getting me a bunch of the, uh, yep, there it is, invar imbued cloth. 
four of those should do for me to make an uncommon backpack out of my regular one. There we go. Oh, that's much more space. All right, Zoe, you are going to be coming along with me in the backpack for now. And we're going to go on an explore. As I said in the previous episode, uh, I have not actually upgraded the energy in this, but I do have a couple extra battery cells should I need them in my backpack. And we are going to head off and explore a little bit of this area that I had stopped off at at the end of the last episode. And it looks like there's air inside, so this might be a good thing. Uh, I'm going to just, just pop this into my backpack now. We're going to get Zoe on the hotbar just in case. Uh, I don't know how she's going to do in this little tight area. It is kind of a, a small fit. Maybe we uh, we keep her with us and when we're not just like doing this little parkour stuff. That sounds like blazes. And illagers? Oh boy, uh, that looks like a caster. Uh, what if I do this? Can I grab that back? It's not even affecting him. Oh, he must have that shield up. Is he got weapons or something going on here? There's several of them. They all have shields. And there's a blaze. Zoe, get him. <laughs> Actually, can I hit these guys? Whoa, okay. Maybe I just hit the one. I've got shield break on this thing, so this is a good thing. Oh, and they're hitting each other. No, get out of here. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, these guys hurt really bad. <laughs> Zoe, you don't seem too bothered by this. <laughs> oh, I put you in docile mode. Oh no. Oh, well, I'm going to leave you there for the moment. They don't seem too bothered by you. Ow. Okay, this is this is not good. Let's get some some healing going on here. Maybe I can actually use this. Yeah, I can use the the boomerang on the blazes at least. And uh, finish them off since these other guys don't seem too bothered with coming back or coming out. I'm guessing that there is also a spawner nearby. Shoot. That got stuck in the wall. Okay. Time to go. I can't hit these guys because their shields are... Okay. Oh, wow. Oh. Oh, wow. That, that, that hurt a lot. Zoe's still back there. Oh! You're here! Okay. Okay. Let, let's... Let's switch you into non-docile mode, shall we? Man, the durability hit on all my stuff. Let, let me put some of my stuff in here. <laughs> oh, that's going to take a while to, to heal up. Wow. Okay. Wandering aggressive berserker. In this mode, your dog will follow you, and if any mob draws near, they will attack it without warning. Tactical. It will follow you, but will not attack anything unless you use the command beam. No, I'm not using command beams. Patrol. Follow closely and attack any monsters that come close. Oh, here we go. Aggressive. In this mode, your dog will follow you and attack anything that attacks you or that you attack. Okay, this this works for me. Um, I see that there are med kits. Restore 70% of your health over 35 seconds. Use for 5 seconds to apply. Interesting. Oh, wow. My, my, my night vision hat almost got destroyed here. Oh, my gosh. All right, I'm going to put the rest of this gear on for now, uh, and we're going to try this again. But... Uh, Hopefully this time with a little bit less fail, and we might explore a different structure first. That one seemed pretty hardcore, and I could have gone about that much more strategically. And just so I don't lose it, I'm going to leave my crewman's cap here, because it took a huge durability hit, and everything else took about a third. Uh, so I should be it should be safe enough for one more death at least, uh, before I really am <laughs> going to suffer. Oh, boy. See, now this looks much more interesting. Uh, and maybe even safer? I don't know. 
As much as I would just love to leave this um, here, I'm going to take it with me. Yeah, it's in my inventory. And hop inside. Now, I don't have my uh, dark vision hat on, but oh, there's a horse. And uh, oh, cow, animal crops is in here. <gasps> oh, neat. Okay, so we can grow animals. <gasps> Cocoa beans. Oh, you beautiful thing, you. Okay. It's, oh, coca beans. Coca beans. I finally has it. I will need to set up some automation for that. This has been a great find, and I can get all the animals that I need from this location with the animal crops. Wow. Oh, and there's a a barrel with a lapis paxel. <laughs> I'll take a little bit more of this stuff. Thank you. Oh, and they're triggered by me by me running around as well fully grown so that's a sheep seed that makes so much more sense with animal crops in here okay nice well as i don't need them yet i think i'm going to leave them here and i'm going to put a marker on the map oh jeez okay whoo that was really close i was not anticipating to be attacked by whatever the heck this thing is um let me hop out Grab that just in case, and let's give you a slice. No, bad. I'm getting poisoned. Great. Get, get great sorted. And wow, a poison. What the heck is this thing? Anemone. Okay, that's fantastic. I'm gonna eat some food, and hopefully that will stop. It was it shooting. It was shooting poison arrows at me. Oh gosh. Okay, the mobs around here are not to be messed with. Oh. All right, I've found another location of interest here, and I have no idea what to make of this. My battery cell is at 1%. Still good for uh, getting some air, at least. But let's go in a bit tentatively here. What do we have? Ice gateway? This kind of scares me. <laughs> Bone blocks. Futura controller block. I have no idea what that's about. Let me grab the loot down here first, and then we can go explore that maybe. All right, and here we are at this one, a jungle gateway. I've, I have no idea. Rustic resources. Nothing up above it looks like. No tool. Pickaxe level iron. Should I mine it? Do I right click on it? I'm, I'm worried. You hear a rumble. Take your valuables and move away. Okay. Doing it. <laughs> oh. Oh, this is a puzzle dungeon. Oh, this is so cool. Okay. Um, and it is now an opening. Okay, that's so cool. And then there's a glacial one. All right, let's go to this glacial one. Click on here. Moving away. I think it just goes down. But I'm still moving away from it regardless. There we go. Chunk. <laughs> so cool. So... Oh, I hear so many dudes in there as well. Hello? I see name tags. So much danger has just been unveiled. Alright, I'm about to run out of air. Let me hop in my ship here. And I think what I'm going to do is head back home, set something up, and then we'll continue on with exploring some of these dungeons in the next episode. I think what I'm going to do now that I'm back home is start making some of these water-resistant planks, which uses those bitter lily buds that I was farming earlier uh, in the episode got a bunch of those and I should have in my other workstation a bunch of materials that I can use. Uh, yeah, I've got a bunch of aluminum fasteners. Cool. There we go. That makes a good 32 of those. Then I slap those around some of those hydrostatic botany pots and I can make one that, or I just slap it around a regular uh, botany pot. Yeah, that's what these are here. Because all I'm getting is like sticks and logs out of this. I wasn't even getting the, uh, the coca beans, which would have been nice. 
But if I take this, I'm also going to grab this hoe because you can actually make farmland, by the way. You just put a hoe next to dirt and it will make farmland for you, which is really nice. But if I take this one and wrap it around a bunch of these, there we go. I get one that should automatically harvest now. So if I put this in play, now you think we're pressure hydrogen, but only work on the ocean floor. Oh. Not to worry, it's still here, even though there's like a little visual glitch. So I have to, okay, uses the hydrostatic pressure on the ocean floor to automatically harvest crops and place them in an adjacent inventory. Oh, that's that's kind of sad, actually. I, I had some hydrostatic pot plans. Instead, I'm going to go with a little something else. I was experimenting in here, and this is where I, I thought that the hydrostatic pots would work. I was experimenting in here and it, it seems that you can plant things here. Uh, see, I've got like this little experimental spot that I, I've got in place with just some cotton and some industrial hemp seeds, flax and wheat seeds, etc. Um, those work fine and they grow pretty good. And I was thinking of just making this one area here, surrounding it with like some uh, water laden steps so that it uh, waters the entire area and then build a little create contraption on top of it that auto harvests all of it. And I was thinking I might do that as well with a bunch of the uh, charcoal uh, in like another area. So I've got like a little, uh, I don't know, this just be like my growing area above here. But if I, I, I obviously won't be able to use those hydrostatic pots. Those will have to go on the floor. Let me grab one of these and, oops, I need to go down one more level. If I grab these, I can put it down. Does it have to be in the water? This is my confusion here. So I'm I'm on the ocean floor. If I put this here and do... It actually works. So then, what if I put like a storage crate underneath it? Uh, is it because of certain Y levels that this has to work at? Yeah, that takes like a minute 25, but then it would output into this automatically. So let's just take enough time here to wait and find out. But I think I'm going to stand inside here so that I don't end up drowning. And now for the test. 100% it seems to have automatically started regrowing itself. And it's possible that I might have gotten a jungle log out of that or nothing. Uh, I mean, there, there's a good chance that you get nothing out of this, but... It does seem to work, and this is actually very Subnautica-like, where you could have like your little uh, water beds that would be growing out here. This is really neat, actually. I'm going to just take all this stuff, whoa, grab all the things, and my crate. So yeah, I think uh, we're going to call it there for today. I know that I kind of like wussed out on uh, the, the exploration part because I got owned really badly. I, I didn't know what to expect, and now that I do... I, I need to prepare better. So anyway, uh, stick around for the next episode where we definitely will be going into one, if not more of those structures and explore a bunch more. I, I'm looking forward to it myself because I usually like a really good hardcore adventure set. Uh, uh, not not like death hardcore, but you know, some, some difficulty involved. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to click on the like button. It helps the channel immensely with spreading the word of the mischief. And if you want to check out other videos like this one, f please feel free to uh, click on any of the videos that are currently showing up on the screen. Don't be afraid to come visit us on Twitch. Click that notification bell. And until next time, folks, I'll see ya. Who's a good pupper? Yes, you are.